Hello, and welcome to another Miss Creepy Story. This one's called My Buddy's Old Job. My friend used to work the late shift at a gas station in the middle of the county, in the thick of the woods and out of the way. It was kind of a rest stop for truckers, but with a new highway in the area, the business was starting to get hurt by the lack of traffic. The woods around here go on for what feels like forever. You get to the top of certain hills, and you can see pine trees as far as the horizon, with thin, snaking roads cutting through them with sparse traffic. He doesn't like to talk about his job. He used to, but since about two months ago, his personality has changed, and recently, over a few matches of Halo and half a bottle of Captain Morgan's, I got him to open up about something he's been distant about. The reason he quit. He told me the following happened, but he was a little inebriated at the time. We both were, so I don't know if he was just trying to scare me. He knows I'm a fan of horror, and that he'd attempt to scare me with a made-up story isn't a stretch. The night was November 10th, 2011, and it was a slow night. He arrived at work at 9 o'clock and was to work 8 hours. He said the day started, usually, with a single customer coming up to purchase gas and go on his way. Around 10.30, he saw a stray deer run past the parking lot, scared out of its wits. He shrugged, thinking it was frightened by traffic. Ten minutes later, five other deer followed through, one running its way into the store. He and the night manager were shocked and tried to coax the animal out, but the creature was absolutely berserk kicking over a row of food and a few stands. The manager told him to scare it off with a broom and chase it out. My friend, the ass kisser he is, managed to do so, swatting it in the side and forcing it out of the building. He gave chase, trying to run it out of the parking lot, and that's when he said things got really bad. He looked at me and spoke with a tone I'm not used to from him. He said he felt like he was being watched. The woods around here can be very dark, and the only light the store had was from the signs, and from inside the store and pumps, so light penetration didn't get into the woods. He paused and looked around, holding the broom in front of him. Shaking his head, he began to make his way back to the store when he said he heard something. He said he heard footsteps in the bushes, something moving with him and only when he moved. He walked inside, grabbed his flashlight, and shined it out into the woods. Something ran off. He chuckled and made his way back in and spoke with his boss. Mark, I think we've got critters in the woods. Probably a fox or a raccoon or something. They got back to work. It was a slow night. My friend returned to a magazine I let him borrow, and everything was relatively normal. The building, the rest stop, has an old restaurant that they had to close down in the economic downturn, about 30 or so feet out from the back of the gas station part of the complex. The security system was still in on in there because they'd started to use the place for makeshift storage until they got the funds to get it back up and running. At 11 o'clock, the alarm went off. The manager grabbed his flashlight and a handgun and ran out, and my buddy tried to get the police on the line from Zavala. Crooks weren't uncommon. People would try to break into abandoned buildings around here and find something, metal to steal or pots and pans, you know. My buddy said he couldn't get a signal. The phone line was dead. He ran out to try to meet with his boss, and his boss ran out from the building, screaming at the top of his lungs and telling him to run back into the store. My buddy dropped his flashlight and bolted back to the building. Something was chasing them, he said. He only got a glimpse at it because it was in the shadows, but it was fucking taller than him, and he's pushing 6'5". They ran through the back entrance, and his boss slammed a plank down over the door. Something massive slams into the door and gives it three hard pounds. My friend is flipping Dot. His boss reached to the side of the door, knocked over a crate and grabbed a shotgun, and tried to open the door a crack. Get on the fucking door, he yelled. My friend complied, throwing his body weight against it. People would try to break into abandoned buildings around here 
and find something. Metal to steel or pots and pans, you know. My buddy said he couldn't get a signal. The phone line was dead. He ran out to try to meet with his boss, and his boss ran out from the building, screaming at the top of his lungs and telling him to run back into the store. My buddy dropped his flashlight and bolted back to the building. Something was chasing them, he said. He only got a glimpse at it because it was in the shadows, but it was fucking taller than him, and he's pushing 6'5". They ran through the back entrance, and his boss slammed a plank down over the door. Something massive slams into the door and gives it three hard pounds. My friend is flipping. His boss reached to the side of the door, knocked over a crate and grabbed a shotgun, and tried to open the door a crack. Get on the fucking door, he yelled. My friend complied, throwing his body weight against it. Claws. He says he remembers seeing the nastiest, meanest looking nails curl around that fucking metal door and leave him prints. His boss aimed a shotgun through the crack and unloaded two shells into whatever the fucking thing was. He says he heard a dog-like yelp and something scampers off. What the fuck was that? I don't fucking know. I need you to get on the fucking line with Zavala and get some police officers here. The phone's dead. What do you mean, the phone's dead? I don't, I don't know. Try your cell phone. No bars. Being in a dead zone in the middle of a giant forest, this was a pipe dream. We can't get anyone. We can wait. Maybe it got scared off. Listen, the thing wasn't a fucking bear or something like that. Bears don't walk on two legs. Bears, his boss paused, dropping and sliding down the wall. He caught his breath and shook his head. The front door, a chill ran down my friend's spine. He looked out at the front door. How? We can't keep that thing in. The fucking door's glass. Then we block it. We have to keep ourselves safe until someone passes. The two made their way to the main room of the store and shoulder pressed a stand against the door and then another. All things were starting to look okay, he told me, he thought. Boss man told him to go check the security feed in the office. My buddy went into the office, a small, white pastel room, and looked over the TV screen in there. He flipped through the security cameras. Three of them. One for the pumps. Nothing. One for the back. Nothing. One for the diner. And it was a wolf. Just sitting in the darkness, licking a wound on its shoulder. No sound to the feed, just the dim light of the moon and the light from the pumps. The wolf glanced around, and things became apparent it wasn't an average wild dog. The thing was more prominent, much bigger, and those weren't legs. It had arms and fingers and those eyes. He says all he saw was black in those sockets, reflecting the dim light entering the room. It stood up and looked directly at the security camera directly at my buddy. My friend screamed and fled the office. It's some kind of fucking demon. What did you see? It's like a dog, but it's walking around on eye. I know I, I know, I saw it. Where is it? It's still in the diner. Let me see. His boss entered the room and looked over the feed with him. It was gone. A front window shattered and a deer carcass slid across the floor, its head torn off of its spine legs kicking and thrashing with the firing of dying nerves. The two ran back into the room, and his boss aimed his shotgun into the darkness. It was just standing there, just out of range, and just watching. Things went to. Shit. After this, four others emerged out of the tree line and began to spread out. My buddy says he was bawling and unable to control himself at this point. He was so afraid at this point, he said he wanted to throw up. His boss looked at him and handed him the shotgun. We, we have to get out of this place. How? We blow the pumps. I don't need to get eaten alive by whatever those fucking things are. This job is not testament to my life at this point. He wiped his brow. We lure them in here and trap them somehow. We trigger the pumps and drive the fuck out of here. How? I don't know. One of us has to be bait. Fuck that. Do you have an alternative? We. We use the deer. 
It threw it at us. If it wanted the deer, it wouldn't have thrown it in. It's fucking with us. Things went to shit after this. Four others emerged out of the tree line and began to spread out. My buddy says he was bawling and unable to control himself at this point. He was so afraid at this point, he said he wanted to throw up. His boss looked at him and handed him the shotgun. We, we have to get out of this place. How? We blow the pumps. I don't need to get eaten alive by whatever those fucking things are. This job is not testament to my life at this point. He wiped his brow. We lure them in here and trap them somehow. We trigger the pumps and drive the fuck out of here. How? I don't know. One of us has to be bait. Fuck that. Do you have an alternative? We. We use the deer. It threw it at us. If it wanted the deer, it wouldn't have thrown it in. It's fucking with us. Then, can't we build things in here? Like, improvised weaponry. I don't want to end up on the receiving end of whatever those fuckers outside have planned. They're demons or some shit, right? I don't fucking know. You're a Christian, right? Don't you have like, a cross or something? No, atheist. You. Damn it. His boss rubbed his balding head and looked over the aisles. Tapping on the walls outside. One of them was trailing its finger across the bricks, creating a scraping noise. It was taunting them, he said. They weren't fucking animals. They were doing this out of equal parts malice and hunger. Grab some aerosol cans and a handful of lighters, bottles, gasoline, you know that spare tank we keep in the back room. Yeah, we can make Molotovs. We just need rags. I think I've got a baseball bat and a tire iron somewhere. Listen to me, kid. We're not fucking dying here. If these bastards want our flesh, they're going to have to fucking pull it from our fighting bones. Texans don't fucking quit. You hear? Yeah. Yeah? Go on. Get the supplies, gather them in the center. I'm going to keep an eye on fuckwad over there. My buddy went to do just that. His boss just kept watch, looking over the thing in the parking lot. The two made eye contact, and the thing just began to pace to the left and right, drool, and snot dripping from its maw. It showed its teeth, way too many teeth. My buddy was just at the point of pushing the gas tank in when the back door got knocked down. One of them was inside and let out the most shrill, horrifying sound my buddy said he'd ever heard. Something that sounded like a woman screaming mixed with a dog howl. The boss turned and unloaded a shotgun directly into its brain. Its face was blasted off and it was set reeling back, stumbling to the floor. He ran over to it screaming at the top of his lungs, full adrenaline, and began to bash its skull with the butt of the shotgun. My buddy went to try to bar the door again, just as he heard heavy footsteps on the roof of something trying to make it towards the rear entrance. They saw the weakness in the building, and they wanted in. They wanted it more than anything. The thing trapped inside was still screaming, thrashing about, as the shotgun butt cracked its skull. Help me, boss man shouted. My buddy turned, pulled down a shelving unit to block the door, and grabbed a fire extinguisher. He says it took two, three minutes of concentrated strikes to the thing's head to get it to stop moving. It got a few good scratches in. My buddy was cut across the arm, and his boss got cut in the face. Five cuts. The thing slapped him. Both of them sat down to regain their composure. The things outside were flipping out screaming and howling, chattering to each other in something, barks, and growls, kind of, my buddy tells me. The thing on the ground was about 6'9", with long legs, long arms, and a wolf's head. Black fur, thicker around the shoulders and torso, and the thing didn't appear to have much of a neck. The boss gave it a prod with the shotgun, and gave it a look over with his shotgun. It was a female. It was built like a prizefighter, stocky but with long limbs. Its claws were about an inch long, and its hands were thick with muscle and tendons. He struggled to describe what the thing smelled like. Kind of like Rokel meets wet dog. His boss checked the thing's neck for a pulse. It's still alive. 
What do you mean it's still alive? I think we caved its fucking head in. I don't know, okay? I don't. I just don't know. Its heart is still beating, despite all we put into it. I mean, I shot this thing in the face with a shotgun, and you and I both spent God knows how long bashing its skull with the sturdiest things in here. And you're telling me it's still alive. His boss sighed and rubbed the sweat from his brow. We booby trap it. We have to use this. We booby trap it, and we use it to get the fuck out of here. Get the gasoline tank. The plan was in place within moments. The two looked out the front window and began to taunt the beast in the front, which had been rejoined by the others. Hey, fucker, we've got your girlfriend. Come see if you've got the balls to get her back, you wolf and son of a bitch. You and your ugly friends don't have what it takes to bring down the two of. And that was all it took. Stronger than any man, four of them pushed into the front windows and knocked over the stand blocking the path. They blocked the front entrance, and my buddy and his boss ran into the office and closed the door. The female was in the main room, lifted and dragged to rest on a stack of rags and flammable items. My buddy's boss lit a matchbook and tossed it on a thin trail of gasoline on the tile floor. The gas trail ran under the door into the main room, where it ignited massive splashes that covered almost everything. The room was on fire, burning fur. That's what my buddy says he remembers. The smell of burning fur, the scream of those things once they realize what's happening, and the smell of… He could hardly describe it. It was the most pungent odor he'd ever smelt of those fucking things burning. The two of them kicked open the door, makeshift masks, protecting them from the smoke, and they bolted for it, making their way towards my buddy's truck parked out front. His boss stopped and ran for the pumps and began to spill gasoline on the floor. He then ran towards the truck, and the two were on the road. Once they were about 60 yards out, flaming embers or something must have ignited the gas at the pumps. The explosion leveled the place and set the surrounding forest on fire. My buddy and his boss were detained by the police for about six weeks after that. They stuck with their story, but the police could not determine any unusual entities sighted at the place during the night. No remains of any humanoid creature were found. There were, however, unusual footprints found leading into and out of the area. The tracks started off as human and gradually became dog-like. The investigation was quietly closed due to a lack of evidence. The explosion and fire were labeled an accident by the police. My buddy says that he still can't sleep some nights because of what he saw that night. He never leaves the house at night anymore, and he says that he's got a revolver with silver bullets in three rooms in his home for if and when they decide to come for him in revenge. I believe him. I know they're probably out there in the dark woods of Southeast Texas, and it's only a matter of time before they start hunting again. The next full moon is February 7th. We'll be ready then. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe for more Miss Creepy Stories.